Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's Journey Through Torah. This week, we're in the second Parsha of Exodus, where it's Parsha Vaera, <clears throat> and Yahweh talking to Moshe, saying how he appeared to the patriarchs. But the context of this is uh, Moshe is, is saying, okay, Yahweh, you sent me. Things aren't getting better. What's happening? <laughs> okay, what's going on? What's the next move? What's really going on here? And I want to talk about the words that Yahweh spoke to Moshe to help encourage him and encourage the people of Israel. And um, as far as the plans that he was going to do, he, he didn't just say, oh, wait till, you, wait till you see what I'm going to do to Pharaoh now. No, he says, wait till you see how I reveal me to you. And that's, that's ultimately what we're looking at. We're, we want to be in that place in our life where whatever our, cir our circumstance, whatever our situation is, we want to know how Yahweh reveals himself to us. It's that personal relationship. Now, Yahweh speaking to Moshe as an individual, but he's speaking on behalf of a nation of people, on behalf of all Israel, all these people who were to be called by his name, but they didn't really know him. And when it says they didn't really know him, we'll get into this. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, they didn't know the one that they were crying out for. He was saying, where you been? <laughs> you know, the, the people don't really have it really experienced you. You know, even uh, in last week's partial, where he's like, well, who do I say sends me? It's a matter of authority. You know, um, I'm not, I can't go of my own authority. You know, Moshe was talking at the burning bush to Yahweh. He says, I've tried that. I've got on my own authority. It didn't work. That's why I'm in exile. <laughs> so now Yahweh is saying, no, you're going in my authority. You're going in my name. You're going in the, in the, in the power uh, and the strength that I have given you. Just do what I'm telling you to do. I will be there. Okay. So we see in this parsha how Yahweh is again setting up to Moshe, just wait and see what I'm about to do. <clears throat> and this is before we're getting into uh, all the plagues and everything that's involved that uh, you can get into uh, later in this Parsha and then next week as well. So Yahweh is like, I'm about to reveal myself and I'm about to show you things that you've never seen or experienced, but it's all me. Okay. So we start with this portion in Exodus chapter six, verses two and three. Where it says, God spoke to Moses and said, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, yet by my name, Adonai, I made I, I made myself known to them. <clears throat> um what is saying here really, it's not just Adonai. Adonai, it's uh it's a title. Adonai means Lord, okay? So that's not really his name. Uh, we look in the Hebrew, it says, Vaidaber Elohim El Moshe Vayomer Elav Ani Yod He Vav He, and spoke Elohim to Moshe and said to him, I am Yod He Vav He. Okay, that's what it says right there in, in verse two. So he says to him, Elohim spoke and said, Ani Yahweh, I am Yod He Vav He. Then he says in the next verse, Ba'era el Avraham, el Yitzhak, ba'el Yaakov, ba'el Shaddai. Ushmi Yahweh lo nodati lahim. And what he's saying is, and I appeared to Avraham, to Yitzhak, and Yaakov as el Shaddai, or in el Shaddai. But by my name, yod heh vav -He, I did not make myself known to them. Yadati, I did not make myself known to them. So the question this, this brings up is, uh, so did they not know him as Yahweh? I believe they did, but what he's saying was, I, I, I appeared to them as El Shaddai. What he's saying there is the title, El Shaddai, is how he acted in their lives. And I, I, I believe we see this in many times in our life as well. When we pray, we're like, you know, Yahweh, things that I'm experiencing in my life and I need your deliverance, so I need to know that you are the God that delivers. There you go. Um, Lord, I, I need to know that you were in control of, of, of my life here, so I need to know that you are the one who rules everything. See, it's along these lines that he says, I made myself known as El Shaddai. I revealed myself to them for what they needed in the circumstances and the situation they were in. So here, I'm about to reveal myself to my people as yod heh vav -He. and And to build the case that 
I do believe they knew him by yod heh vav even going all the way back uh, in Noah's days, you know, where he'd read, reading about that, where it says, and, and then men begin to call on the name of the Lord, right? Well, they had to know, right? Now, granted, this is substantially years later, but I do believe that they knew him as Yahweh, but he manifested himself to them in the situations that they needed at that time. Okay, let's go to Genesis 17, 1 and 2. It says, when Avram was 90 years old, 9, 99, Yahweh appeared to Avram and said to him, I am the Almighty God, and the El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and you and multiply you exceedingly. So Yahweh appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai. So that's how he knew him. That's what he was saying. In this situation, this is what I'm going to do in your behalf. Okay, and then uh, in Exodus 6, 3, it says, by my name, Yahweh wasn't known to them. Again, go back and look at Genesis 15, 6 and 8. It says, and he believed Yahweh, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know I shall inherit it? Now look in the Hebrew, okay, in verse 7. And Yahweh speaks to Avram and says, Vayomer alav ani Yahweh. So he appeared to him before and said, I am El Shaddai. But here he's, he's appearing to him saying, I am Yahweh, okay? And then he said, uh, Lord God, how shall I know inherit? And then he says, Vayomer Adoni Yahweh, so, and said, Lord Yahweh, how shall I know I, I shall inherit it? So again, it's not that he didn't know him by his name, yod Hey vav Hey. It's just when he was revealing himself in these circumstances, that's what he needed, is El Shaddai. That's what Yahweh was showing him. He, I am El Shaddai, okay? So again, um, what does it mean when he says, I am Yahweh? Now, he's giving promises here, and he's, he's associating his name with the promises. What that means is this. If someone makes a promise to you, and you don't know them, you don't know their reputation, you don't know the, them, they have no credibility. Okay? So, what Yahweh is saying is he's giving them a, a point of contact with a personal relationship, and he says, you can trust me. See, I am credible. You can trust me. The promises that I am giving you are tied to my name and associated to how I am going to manifest myself to you and work on your behalf. So he revealed himself to Avraham as El Shaddai, and here he will reveal himself and act toward his people as yod heh vav -Heh. In uh, the Pentateuch, uh, Samson Raphael Hirsch writes uh, that Isaiah speaks of the ultimate Ge'elah. This is the ultimate... Uh, redemption, okay, get a, Goel is a redeemer, right, so the, the ultimate redemption, he says in Isaiah 52, 6, therefore my people will know my name. Literally, he says, uh, yada, uh, ami shmi. so, and my people will know my name. And it's not just a matter of, oh, yod heh vah okay, we know his name. No, what that means is, we will experience him. We will experience his life and his character and, and the name that he has given to us. Okay, that's what he's talking about. So it means to understand God's methods of planning and ordering, which are implied in this name, an understanding that can only be completely achieved out of the collective experience of all the ages, and the patriarchs stood at the beginning of the ages. So, as the one whose name is Yahweh, they had not come to know me. Okay? It's also been said that it was not fully known or acknowledged to Israel See, they have not, not experienced Yahweh this way yet. They didn't know him in this capacity. They knew uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was El Shaddai. Well, and they're like, okay, here we are in, in Mitzrayim, and we're oppressed, and, and what's going on now? Where's El Shaddai? And Yahweh is saying, I am El Shaddai, but I'm going to reveal myself to you as yod heh vav -Heh. And uh, there's, there's so many things you can you can go on with this so many directions you can go on with this yod heh vav -Heh is the one true god he um he is the gracious merciful compassionate he is the one who redeems he is the one who, who delivers he is the one who heals he is the one who, all of these other names what you want to call names i believe they're more like attributes um all these other names are all encompassed in yod heh vav -Heh. okay so he's like i'm about to reveal myself to you so we go on in Exodus 6, 4, and 5. He says, I also established my covenant with them, and I gave them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage where they journeyed. Furthermore, I have heard the groaning of B'nai Israel, whom the Egyptians are keeping in bondage, so I have remembered my covenant. 
Now, he says, I'm going to bring you to this land that I had promised you. It's not just deliverance from Mitzrayim, but also delivering them to the promise. See, the, the deliverance would not be complete if he just delivered them from Mitzrayim. They would have brought them through the river, you know, across to the other side. It's like, okay, guys, I brought you out. Have fun. Where do we do now? Where do we go now? What's established now? Where are we being led to? We're not, uh, we're wandering. What's happening? See, so Yahweh brought them through. He brought them through the river, brought them to the mountain to reveal himself to them, to reveal his ruach, to reveal himself, reveal his word, his heart for his people, to equip them to go into the promise, and he would lead them into that promise. So all this was a matter of bringing them out of Mitzrayim, but bringing them to the land to gather in all the people together into the land. And this is where we get into so many other things in the scripture, because this promise is reiterated throughout the scriptures about bringing the people in, gathering the people together, and bringing them back into the land. It, it, it fills the, the, the Tanakh, and the, even in the Brihad Hashah. Matthew 10, 6, we see that Yeshua said his people, he said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew, Matthew 15, 24, he says, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in John 10, 16, he says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So again, Yeshua is saying, I came to gather in my sheep. He will be their king, right? He will be one kingdom, and we'll all be together and dwelling with him, and he will be our king, he will be our shepherd, we will be one flock together with him. We see this again in the prophets in many places, but I'm going to read here in Ezekiel 28, 25. Thus says the Lord God, when I gather the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and manifest my holiness in them in the sight of the nations, and they will dwell in their own land that I gave to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell securely in it, and they shall build houses and plant vineyards. They shall dwell securely when I execute judgments upon all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt. And then they will know that I am Yahweh their God. See, he says, I will bring my people in. I will bring them all together and gather them all in back into the land that I promised them, that the forefathers and for their descendants, right? Isaiah 56, 8 says, the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. Jeremiah 31.10 says, Hear the word of Yahweh, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd does his flock. And in Ezekiel 37, 21 to 28, says, So then say to them, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and I will gather them all around and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation in the land. See that? One nation in the land from all the other nations, from wherever they were. Bring them back, make them one nation on the mountains of Israel, and, the, and one king shall be king over them all, and they shall no longer be two nations and no longer be two kingdoms. Side note on that, uh, the mountains of Israel is referred to as the northern part of Israel. The Negev is uh, the southern part. See, the... the um, so again, we're talking about both kingdoms being brought back in together, the northern and southern being brought back in together to be one. And he's talking about this, no longer divided into two kingdoms, but they shall be one. Verse 23, they shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions, but I will save them from all the backslidings which they have sinned and will cleanse them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes. Verse 25, they shall dwell in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever, and David my servant shall be their prince forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will set them in their land and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. Verse 27, my dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, who sanctifies Israel, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. So Yahweh says, they will know me, and I'm going to bring them to the land. My people in my land. See that? And so this promise wasn't, wasn't just for like one people. No, this was, or one time, you know, this was continually throughout the scripture, even today, guys, 
Yahweh says he's going to bring his people into the land, right? Exodus 6, 5, we go back. So it says, moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Now understand, um, when it says remember in the scripture, zakar is most often the word used. And it means like a, a memorial. It's the same word used for memorial. And it doesn't just mean you forgot something. It doesn't mean, oh, um, I forgot. Oh, but I remember now. It doesn't like, oh, yeah, Israel. Oh, yeah, they're down there. Oh, maybe I should do something about that now. You know, no, that's not it at all. To remember is like, like a memorial. You set it up and, and you do something on behalf of it. Okay. You remember because you made something count. You made something there. You, you put a mark to do something because of an event. Okay, so when it says he remembered, it, it's saying that now is the time for him to act on what he had said. See, so what did he say he remembered? Remember my covenant. So he, the delivering of the people of Israel out of Mitzrayim was part of this covenant? A covenant of what? Well, back to Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. Yahweh says to Avram, go from your country, your kindred, and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and to him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Go to Genesis 15, verses 13 and 16. So Yahweh says to Avram, know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and they will be servants there, and they will be afflicted for 400 years. But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace, and you shall be buried in a good old age. And they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. Go to Genesis 17, verses 7 and 8. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout the generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. See, so he says, again, I remember this covenant, and involved in this covenant is bringing the people back to the land. So if Yahweh made this as part of covenant, then guess what? Then it's going to happen, right? Now moving back on, Exodus chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. So uh, Moshe was told, go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzhak, the God of Yaakov, has appeared to me saying, I have observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt, and I promise that I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the, to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, that is a land flowing with milk and honey. So again, it's not just saying, I'm going to deliver you. No, I'm going to deliver you, bring you out of here, and bring you to the land that I promised to do so. Okay, so bringing them to the land was part of this promise, part of this covenant that he said, because we saw Exodus 6, 8, I will bring you to the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you for possession. I am Yahweh. So what is our part and what is our role in this? To follow him. We have a responsibility to follow Yahweh. If we don't follow him, we will not be, be in there very long. See, <laughs> Because if we go into the land and we don't follow him and do what he's saying, you, first off, we're not going to get to the land. But he, then if we get to the land and we don't listen to what he's telling us to do, we're not going to stay there long. Okay? Uh, we read Leviticus 26, 40 and 42. But if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers and their treachery that they committed against me, and also in walking contrary to me, so that I walk contrary to them and brought them into the land of their enemies. See that? Because of their... Um, unrepentedness because of their iniquity, they were put taken out of the land, but Yahweh says he'll bring them back. So if then their uncircumcised heart is humbled and they make amends for their iniquity, then, verse 42, then I will remember my covenant with Yaakov, remember my covenant with Yitzhak, my covenant with Avraham, and I will remember the land. So we've said things along this line before. It's interesting the, the progression of the names that he says here. Normally when you find the, the patriarchs listed, it's Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. But here they are in reverse order, if you pay attention. So, and then it adds something on there, the land on the end of that. What, is, what this alludes to is restoration. I will bring them back to the land and restoring covenant to them, even so much so the covenant with the land itself, even the earth itself. In other words, kind of bringing everything back to the garden, you know, bringing complete and total restoration of the people, the land, the earth, 
Yahweh's creation. Okay. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that Adonai your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant kindness for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his mitzvot. Philippians 2.13 says, For the one working in you is God, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. What it's saying here is that Yahweh keeps covenant, okay? And the things that he is telling you, these promises that he is telling you, he is not only willing to do it, he is fully able to do it, okay? So the things that he has given you, the things that he has promised you, it's not just maybe, no. He is willing to do this. He is willing to keep his word and keep his covenant. He is completely able to do so. In other words, he can and he will. Okay? And so, like we said, our part is to follow him in the midst of that. Okay? And in the midst of all this promise, Yahweh says that when he brought them out of Mitzrayim, he says that this is an act of redemption for the people of Israel. So he says, I will redeem them. And uh, not breaking all this down this time, we've done this in times past, but he uses four expressions of redemption that's given here um, in, in the land. It's, and, and so it's really interesting if you want to break it down and do a study and that uh, I encourage that. That's, that would be an awesome thing to look at. Because redemption, it's not just uh, one thing. There's, there's multiple things that are happening all at the same time, okay? Uh, here's the example. Look for it. At Exodus 6, verses 6 through 8. So therefore say to Bnei Israel, I am Adonai. I will bring you out. There you are from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm of great judgments. I will take you to myself as a people and I will be your God. Look at those things individually and separately. Okay. Um, then he says, you will know that I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Yitzhak, to Yaakov, and give it to you as an inheritance. I am Adonai. I am Yahweh. So interesting here that he has to say, I am Yahweh, after he says the things that he's going to do for us. Why would that be important? Because a lot of times when you read through the scripture and, and Yahweh's saying things that he wants for the people of Israel to either do or believe or act upon, then he says, I am Yahweh. Why? Because he's reminding us, we serve him. He redeemed us. We belong to him. We, we, we follow him. We walk in his ways, not our own. And so when he, we read through things, all this, and he says, I am Yahweh, he's reminding us he is our God. We do not follow our own things. We follow him. So if he is our God, we need to pay attention to that. If he's the one who redeems us, then we need to pay attention to what he's saying and, and follow him and do these things. What hinders our belief? A lot of things can hinder our belief. A lot of times it's personal experiences. Oh, I don't believe that God can do this because of the things that I've seen or the things that I've done or experienced or whatever. Your experiences don't change what Yahweh says. Okay? We cannot put, put Yahweh in a box and, and say, no, I only believe Yahweh and who he says he is by how I, I, uh, me and I alone have personally experienced him. Be careful. Okay? Um, you don't want to tie him down to that because the scripture is full of people who experience Yahweh in so many different ways. Matter of fact, it's full of many blessings and it's full of many hardships as well. Okay. So you can't just say, oh, because, I, because my life is getting difficult, you know, then Yahweh has abandoned me or where is he or anything like that, you know, be careful. Okay. Um, Yahweh reveals himself in many different ways to many different people. Do not let your experiences cast doubt on what Yahweh has promised. Okay, We have to have faith and believe beyond ourselves and believe Him. And this is what Moshe was, was uh, having a problem with as well, because Israel fell into that as well. We see in Exodus 6-9, Moshe spoke this way to B'nai Israel, but look at this, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and cruel bondage. It's mind-boggling. Moshe came to them, and he says, Yahweh's going to redeem you. He's going to bring you out, and he's going to deliver you, and all these things. And you would think they would be like, yes! But no, they did not believe him, because all they could see was what was, what was right in front of them. How is he going to take care of Pharaoh? How is he going to take care of Mitzrayim? How are we going to be released from our bondage? How are we going to get out of here? How are we going to organize? I just don't see it happening, Moses. They didn't believe it, okay? And uh, sometimes through 
the course of time, some of these things changed, okay? But even in the wilderness, they were in there for 40 years because they got to a point where they did not believe what Yahweh said. You know, go send spies into the land because we have to see it for our own eyes. Why? Yahweh says, I'm leading you there and it's going to be yours. Why do we have to see it for our own eyes? Just get there and then do what he says, right? And that's part of the problem. We read in Hebrews 4, chapter, two, or chapter 4, verse 2, it says, For we also have had good news proclaimed to us, just as they did, but the word they heard did not help them, because they were not unified with those who listened in faith. See, it says that uh, in the wilderness, the people, they, they didn't hear the word in faith. They didn't believe what, what Moshe was telling them, and they didn't believe what Moshe was speaking the words of Yahweh to them. And it's like, Moses is just talking big talk. He can't back it up. He's causing us more problems. No, he's telling you the truth. He's telling you promises. He's giving you hope. But they didn't want to hold on to the hope because all they could see was right in front of them. And, it's, and as the scripture says, they did not listen to Moses, which leads to a question. Is it, what do we mean by listen? Do we mean listen? Do we mean believe? Or do we mean obey? Okay, because in the scripture it says, Velo shamu. So they did not listen. So what does it mean to Shema? Shema generally means to listen with the intent of acting on what was heard. Okay, so it says they didn't, they didn't listen to Moshe, but listen to him to do what specifically? Because when he came to them, he says, I'm going, Yahweh says he's going to redeem you, but it says they didn't listen to Moses. So what was he asking them to do? Let's look at it. Uh, what was their command there? So we're only told that Moses went and said that Yahweh had heard them and Moses was going to lead them out. So what was the command that was given to Israel? How about this one? Believe, listen, and follow. Prepare your heart to do this. Prepare your heart and make the decision to, here's a phrase you may have heard, follow me. <laughs> the one that was sent by Yahweh was telling Israel, follow me because I am following Yahweh. Follow me because, because he will lead us out. And the people did not believe Moshe, so they did not want to hear him. They did not want to be obedient. They did not want to prepare their hearts to get out of there. They, they didn't want to follow because they didn't see how it was going to happen. Looks like this. In John chapter 5, verses 46 and 47, Yeshua says, For if you were believing Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But since you do not believe his writings, how can you believe my words? Yeshua was telling the people, if you truly believed what Moses was telling you, if you truly believed that Yahweh was speaking to Moses, Moses was giving the word, and what he was saying was the word of Yahweh, and that is what you are following and working on and doing and living, you would believe the words that Yeshua was telling you. Because Moses wrote about Yeshua. So if you believe Moshe, then you should believe what Yeshua said. And the, the, op the opposite of that is just as true. So if you believe Yeshua, then you need to believe what Moses said. Because Yeshua was not taking anything away from what Moses wrote, which was the word of Yahweh that was given to him. He didn't contradict it. He didn't remove it. He didn't change it. Okay, so he said, these things, they, they, they're backing me up. And so why would Yeshua say that these things testify of who he is and writing about him and then say it's irrelevant? Not going to happen. Okay. Uh, also, we see in the prophets again, right? Ezekiel 20, verses 5 to 12. So say to them, thus says the Lord God, on the day when I chose Israel, I swore to the offspring of the house of Jacob, making myself known to them in the land of Egypt, I swore to them, saying, I am Yahweh your God. On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of the land of Egypt and into a land that I had searched out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of, of all lands. And I said to them, cast away the detestable things your eyes feast on, every one of you. And do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. You didn't hear about Moses telling them that at this point, did you? But Yahweh is saying right here in Ezekiel that this is what he told to the people of Israel. And then verse 8, but they rebelled against me and were not willing to listen to me. Yeah, that's what it says. Velo avo lishmoa alai. So again, they were not willing to listen to me. Moshe was speaking. But he was speaking the words that Yahweh gave him. Still reading on. None of them cast away their detestable things their eyes feasted on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. And I said I would pour out my wrath upon them and spend my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. 
but I acted for the sake of my name that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations among whom they lived, in whose sight I made myself known to them in bringing them out of the land of Egypt. Verse 10. So I led them out of the land of Egypt, and I brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my statutes and made known to them my rules by which, if a person does them, he shall live. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between me and them that they might know I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. See that? So he, he, he told them, it's not just a matter of believe the words that I'm telling you that Yahweh, I'm going to redeem you. They didn't want to change what they were familiar with. Hmm. Even though they wanted out of their situation, they're crying out for deliverance. They didn't want to change what they were familiar with in order to have that accomplished. That speaks a lot, doesn't it? You know, a lot of times we get in situations where we're like, okay, God, I need you. Yahweh, I need you. But are we willing to change our life and our circumstances, as he says, so that we can follow him and walk out of the situations that we're in? A lot of things to consider there, isn't it? Are we getting in that same situation? We're not listening to Moses. We're not listening to Yeshua. We're not listening to Yahweh because of broken spirit and harsh slavery. It's difficult to see outside of our circumstances. It's difficult to see uh, where, where, we're at, where we're just in the situations of life. In these times, do we prepare our hearts to receive the word of Yahweh in faith? Do we receive uh, our, in, in our heart to follow him? Do we hear his words? Are we walking in his ways? Are we doing things for him? Or are we caught in our circumstances? It, that's it. A lot of times we just, get, we just can't see beyond where we're at. But Yahweh is asking us to see him. We don't even have to see beyond where we're at. We just have to see him. And we just have to follow him. And he says he is the one who will deliver us. Okay? Romans 2.5 says, Because of your hardness and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. This is again, like reading when Pharaoh hardened his heart, right? And even that's a whole other issue we're not going to get into today, but uh, it, said, it says Pharaoh hardened his heart, and then it says Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, which is right, both. Okay? If you are refusing to hear what Yahweh is saying, you are hardening your heart, and then it's, it's getting to a point where Yahweh will just turn you over to that. But if you repent and follow him, see that? Even that uh, getting caught in our circumstances and situations and not seeing past that, we need to repent from that too. Okay? Then we can be free. We can truly follow him and be free. You know, it's kind of like uh, you've heard us say that the, the truth will set you free. Well, that's only half the statement. Okay, It's not the truth will set you free. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And John 8, 31 and 32, Yeshua said to the Judeans who had trusted him, if you, if you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. See that? The truth will set you free is the culmination of abide in my word, <laughs> Be my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You don't know the truth, it's not going to set you free. And if you're just coming up with things and calling it truth, it's not going to set you free. But to be his disciple, then you will know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. See, there's a difference. So when you are set free, and when you're walking into the promise, there's some things. We have responsibility now. He always says, he redeems you, okay? You can't earn or work your way into salvation, okay? He says he redeems you. We need to just simply repent and follow him, right? But in the process of following him, now we need to get into things like justification, sanctification, right? He is the one who justifies us. He is the one who makes us right. But the sanctification thing, that's a daily doing as he says, walking in his ways, learning to walk with him, okay? That's you are a holy people. Walk that way. And you're not doing something to earn something from him, but you are walking in a way that he said he wants you to walk. Okay? So remember the promise and remember the instructions that you were given when you were redeemed. Like when he brought them out of Mitzrayim, he brought them to the mountain and gave them his word. I redeemed you. I brought you through the water, the mikvah, the baptism. Okay? Then I brought you to the mountain to give you my word by my ruach. Now, I want you to walk in that word as you go to the promise that I have for you. It's no different today. It's the same as it was back then. 
we just don't have to go walking in the wilderness to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, Malachi chapter four, verses one through six says, behold, the day is coming burning like an oven when all the arrogant and evil doers, evil doers will be stubble. And the day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says Yahweh Zavot, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. And um, you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says Yahweh Zavot. So again, he says, you're, I'm going to redeem you. You're going to come out leaping like calves out of the stall. It's, this is going to be a great time. It's going to be joyful. All these great and amazing things. And that's it. No. Verse four. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Eliyahu the prophet before the great and awesome day of Yahweh comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. So again, what he's saying here is when I have set you free, when I have redeemed you, when I have done all these things, don't forget the Torah, because that's what he's given us to walk in, in our freedom. Okay. And then he says, I will send you Eliyahu. I will send you the spirit of Elijah to, to proclaim these things, to turn the heart of the father to the children, the heart of the children to the father. Okay. So all of this working together. And even that son of righteousness that we read about, um, Shemesh and Shemash, same word in the Hebrew, no vowel marking, same word. What is it? Son and servant. It's the same word. So it's, it's saying that the son of righteousness, the servant of righteousness is a, a messianic, it alludes to a messianic prophecy. And it is speaking of Yeshua, the servant of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. This is why the woman with the issue of blood went to touch the hem of the Yeshua's garment, because at the hem of his garment would have been tzitziot, which are supposed to remind us that the word of God is true, he is faithful, and we are to follow it. Okay? So all of this coming in together, saying we are learned to walk in his ways and follow him. In John 15, 8 to 10, it says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See that? So again, the call to be his disciples, walk with him, learn his ways, walk in his love, and uh, that's walking in his kingdom here now. Okay? So that's what, we're, that's what we're called to do. Follow him. Believe what he has given to us. Have some faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So walk with him in the midst of all that. Okay? Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope this has been uh, challenging to you as well. And if it has been a blessing to you, then please share it. Okay? Whatever avenue you listen or watch, please share these teachings to help get them out there. We do believe it's truth. We do believe that it is uh, uh, our desire is to, to help encourage the body and to be a blessing and to help bring people together and Share the heart of the Father in the midst of all this. And uh, your part, you can definitely help by sharing these teachings in whatever avenue that you watch or listen. Another way, it's been a blessing to you, then please consider making a donation to help us continue uh, to make these videos and help put them out there too, okay? And so with all that, be blessed, be a blessing, and shalom.